At last, bull and horse had been beaten, and Kutaro's pride restored. But pride comes before a fall, they say. Expect plenty of dark twists and evil schemes as we stride into what I like to call Act Five. Now back to Kutaro's tale. A short time ago, in a galaxy far from far away, with the power of Calibris and the might of the four champions, Kutaro had won victory after victory against the vicious Moonbear King. More than half the moon had been freed, and the noose was tightening around the tyrant as his moonstone shards were taken and his advantage slipped away. Kutaro's deeds of daring do had become a beacon of hope, and the beleaguered peoples of the moon were on the brink of rebellion. The flimsy soul of a selfish boy had become the adamantine soul of a hero. Kutaro, may the forceps, <coughs> I mean scissors, be with you. Kutaro and Picarina were winding their way back to the wild waste when they got lost in a dense forest. And as dark clouds settled in overhead, our duo found themselves longing more and more for the light of the sun. Please, we're not in Kansas anymore. Ah! Hey, maybe we should, like, turn back. Yeah, I mean, getting lost would be a total bummer. Okay, back to the entrance. But alas, neither one of them had the foggiest idea from whence they came. Supposed to chicken out. You're the hero of the moon, the big cheese. You took that bull by the horns and won, right, champ? Surely Kutaro was strong enough to wrangle a couple of trees. Look, you've got a moon to save and a sun princess to please. So man up, kiddo! As if he had a choice. The only road was forward, or whatever direction they were facing, so our hero steeled himself and pressed on. The pale blue light of the earth, his only guide. You shall not pass. No, not there. Happy Dogma Mask. Let's go for a walk. Slugger. See, that was just the tip of the Kataro iceberg. Hey, a moonstone shard. How many are we up to now? I can't keep count. <gasps> the house was a sugary sucker punch to the appetite. Their eyes started at the fluffy whipped cream snow on the milk chocolate shingles and wandered longingly down crispy, crunchy cookie walls until they found the sticky temptation of the candy windows. Their minds were still toying with thoughts of macaroon molding and Baumkuchen banisters when their eyes wisely decided to shut up and let them smell the darn thing. Oh my gosh, yummy! Do you... Do you think they would mind if we took a bite? We haven't eaten in, like, minutes. No, 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 must not eat delicious house. We need to get the moonstone. <laughs> I have you. What's that? <laughs> Gajaro, your belt is spewing gas. Oh, flawless victory. <laughs> it was a trap. Our champ had stopped to chomp just long enough for the chimp to make a chomp on him. After braving the snacker bosk and taming its watchdog, our hero finally met his match. A house of dangerously delicious confections. But try as he might to resist, Kutaro's fate had already been sealed by the belt about his waist. 
Let us continue our adventure. Behold, Halloween Veal, where every ghost worth his sheet loved a good scare. If you manage to spook someone out of their treats, then by George, you've done your job. However, that was before the moon goddess vanished and sly General Monkey played a real trick on Halloween Veal. He ousted the town's mayor and the ghastly mayoral family from their haunted house, converted the building into a laboratory, and once settled in, Monkey began doing things to the town's produce. You see now the awesome scrumptious tastiness of Monkey's pumpkin creations? The first bite is heaven, but then the cookie crumbles. <laughs> the moonstone shards are back in our clutches. The moon bear king will be most pleased. Uh, you'll pay for this. Uh, give those back. Wait, I would be mad to give up this kind of power. <laughs> Think of the experiments I could conduct. Not while well, I'm around. <laughs> Round indeed! I, monkey, shall use these moonstone pieces in my experiments! Now make like a banana and peel! You creep! Nobody cracks jokes like that on lives! I'll get you! Just as soon as I can find my toes. Oh, Now that is perfect. <laughs> Plump dears, what a shame on you! The stuff in your piggy little faces! You can yell at us later! That ape ran off with our moonstone shark! This is horrible, those stones have the power to restore magic and memory, but now you've messed everything up! Kotaro, you are a special boy, especially stupid! Stop lecturing us! Change us back to normal if you want our help! But magic can only undo magic. You may have been charmed into eating those sweets, but the sweets themselves were no smell. You pick out, you get fat. That's just nature. Wait, what does that mean? You can't fix us? We'll be chubs forever? I said magic can't fix you, dummy! You got yourself fat, now get yourself thin. But it can't be that easy! Oh, nothing is ever easy. And I'm gonna make sure this isn't. Ow! Stop it, you <laughs> Big sweating porky, time's a wasting. Oh, all I need is the moonstone and Calibrus. It's all I need. You know, you could just give up and stay an ugly, pathetic witch forever. Yang Yang! <laughs> Which is the one pulling the strings? This awesomely juicy morsel should come in handy. <laughs> Yum. Or not. but a manifestation of the predictability of everyday life. My soul will never be free. That's crazy talk. We just freed you big time. I am Nebula, Nebula Oblongata, the existential wanderer of the cosmos of the soul, and yet prisoner of the fleshy coils of my impending adolescence. You're a ghost? So is everyone in Halloween. People insist I am the mayor's daughter, but they are deceived by illusion. They do not realize I am a ray of blazing light in a galaxy of darkness, cast out by the gods and saddled with this cage you ordinary fools would call a body. Um, that's nice. Well, if you're the mayor's daughter, maybe you've seen this guy, this monkey guy? He totally swiped our goods, and we want him back. Yes, 
the simian is conducting experiments in the haunted house in the center of town. The place I called my literal home. Well, Kentaro, let's go. Wait. What? Ugh, don't do that. General Monkey has transmogrified the haunted house into a laboratory. It is a fell crucible of tin and iron, a portentous labyrinth of tubes and tinctures. To set foot inside would be to bring down the hammer of your own doom. Unless, of course, you enter through the unspeakable door. Unspeakable? You just spoke it. So, I take it you know where the door is? Yes, it was my literal home. Then could you, uh, show us? Impossible. Monkey stole my key to the unspeakable door. Of course he did. But not the mayor's. Okay, great. So, where is the mayor? In the one place where the haggard robes of mortality can be shrugged aside. Upon the golden bridge that separates life from death. Right. And translation? The graveyard. <laughs> Kutaro survived the most laudious of tasks. A gauntlet of tummy aches and toothaches. After fasting as fast as feasible, he made his way to the graveyard to find the mayor, and hopefully a key to the stolen moonstone pieces. And so the story continues. Before his stint as a scientist, General Monkey was a brilliant mime who made everyone laugh. But being laughed at always rubbed him the wrong way. Determined to better himself, he studied hard and used his evil inventions to get in the Moonbear King's good graces. His piece of the Moonstone made him the smartest creature around. Smart enough to build Castle Grizzlestein, and smart enough to turn Halloween Veal's pumpkins into wickedly tempting snacks. Now, within his laboratory in the haunted house, he was combining Kutaro's seven Moonstone shards with the one that General Dog already had to create an abomination unlike any the moon had ever seen. You know, moon folk used to flock to Halloween Veal just for the thrill of it. Of course, once the Moon Bear King rose to power and real terror took hold, tourism took a nasty, nasty plunge. The ghost town turned into a, well, you know. Huh? You see? This place isn't so scary. Now, how exactly are we supposed to get in? Oh, mister? Hey, mister, could you unlock the gate for us? Ah! It... it's open. Here they were, in the scariest corner of the scariest part of the moon. Fortunately, not even the most horrible of deaths could deter brave Kutaro from his search for the mayor. After you! Yes, Kutaro mustered all his courage and faced the dangers ahead. <clears throat> I say, Kutaro summoned all his courage because if he didn't find the mayor and get the key to the haunted mansion, the Moonstone Shards would be lost forever. Clearly, Kutaro needed a little persuasion. Oh, get your hiney in gear, you chicken! You are looking at the mayor of Halloweenville. You daddy. Mayor! Mayor! Daddy's missed you, Susan. Don't call me that. My name is Nebula. Silly girl. Daddy knows what he named you. Susan's a wonderful name. No, Susan is so plebeian. You can call this earthly vessel, but you can never name my soul. My name is Nebula, Nebula Ablangara, Wanderer of the Cosmos. <laughs> I think we need to look into cancelling your library card. Susan! Susan! Stop it! 
Futuro's efforts had galvanized the ghosts of Halloweeville, and now they rose as one. Armed with torches, they closed in on the haunted house, determined to have the monkey's head. Kill the monkey! Smash his head! Drink his blood! to us now. Let's go, Kataro! And so our Kutaro was left to face Monkey's machinations alone. He's not alone. Finish him! Booster activated! Launch! Rocket punch! Dog had been tamed, and Kutaro was one moonstone shard the richer. But Monkey had slipped right through their fingers again. As for the consequences, well, how could Kutaro know? He was just a puppet, not the one pulling the strings. Kutaro had dismantled Robodog and reclaimed his cache of moonstones. But the Moonbear King would not stand idly by. As our tale rockets towards a climax, the tyrant is already hatching a plan. A plan called Act Six. And so the story continues. Thanks to Kutaro, the shattered white moonstone was coming together piece by piece. Meanwhile, the witch, Esma Potts, who apparently had no qualms about holing up in another person's house, stood before Castle Waxwain's towering portrait of the moon goddess and said, Just you wait! Soon I will be the goddess! And the smile playing on her hideous lips gave way to a chilling laugh. Monkey, where are you? Revisiblate yourself. You are my lord at once. How could you fail me? You, of all my generals. Your mistakes have cost me the upper hand. If he gets the rest of the white moonstone, and he has Calibras. No, oh, wait. I know who it is. Bully Gudaro's tree. What? Who? Tell me. Moonwitch! Esma Potts! Potts? The hag from the kitchen? She is at the White Castle, guiding Kutaro from there. That's what she thinks! I'll destroy them both! A bit and a petir. But how, sire? Simple. The clock tower in the land of time. Pick up, you useless pups! What are you waiting for? Yes, sir! Oh, nothing like a spot of Copernican Artemisia to pass the afternoon. Yes, I can't tell whether it's the smooth, herbaceous flavor or the distinctive biscuity nose, but something about it does tickle my fancy. Who calls during tea time? No manners at all. Oh, uh, please, excuse me. 
a rabbit and a rooster's never-ending tea party? Say again? Moon barking? <gasps> Sire, Lord Master, yes, hello. I have a cue and the chicken taken over the land of time. That clock should have been fixed ages ago. <laughs> My word, tempers fugit. <laughs> Has it been three years? Time is running out, and you were supposed to catch it! <laughs> Never you fear your ISness, it is under control! That's right! We'll have that chronopoly for you in a macro jiffy! Move it! I want that clock to get ah! me right now! Oh, la 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 la! <laughs> A gravity magnetational temporal spatial anomaly. Yes, sir. this all seems correct. And right on schedule. Un, deux, trois, et voilà! Whoa! Into the wormhole and on to the Alcyon past. Time was a bit funny in here, but General Rabbit's highway of playing cards let him quite literally pass the hours. Hey, why are you stalking me? I out of tricks! Fine! You leave me no choice, Gladius Auriculus! Yeah. Time to disappear, you pest! My magic! Wait, wait, wait! Time out! Stop! That's what you get for abracadabbling with us! All right, another one in the bag. Yes, good boy, gather those shards. The Moonstone will soon be complete. Completely mine! One time the goddess, this palace and all the moon shall obey by every command! Now, dear, the witch has finally cracked. Aha, me buxom beauty Esma Potts. How ye shiver me timbers when you dance like that. Maybe we Ooh. all have. Cotero, <laughs> find those last pieces. I'll fat her side, you suffer, and make room for me. <laughs> Our hero's rabbit chase led him deep into the chrono-illogical land of time. Meanwhile, the Moonbear King was on to the witch, whose own dark intentions still hung on the air. Now back to Kutaro's tale. No world is complete without a clock tower, and the moon is no exception. But the hands of this clock are not used to tell time. They are used to shape children's dreams. Light and dark decide if it's a quarter to a nightmare, or half past a daydream, or ten till a rude awakening. To keep a stern watch over the clock, the moon goddess had chosen Mr. Pink. But that was before. When the white moonstone shattered, the clock spun into madness, and Mr. Pink went missing. To bear, or not to bear? Who is she, this witch who's after my moonstone? Why does she oppose me? She didn't have to steal Calibrus. She didn't have to pick on me like this. It's not fair! This is my Moonsies! Nobody else can have it! Not that mean witch! That awful hag! Whoever she is, she's mean and... and I hate her! Have 
I seen her somewhere? Yes, that would explain it. Who is she? Where have I met her before? Wait! Yes, Mika, of course! You're done, Hag. Checkmate! <laughs> Katara, look out! These cards are about to fall! Cushioning Kutaro's fall was a strange garden constructed like a maze. He's on the ropes! Oh, I've got the beautiful plumage! I'll make a rotisserie out of you! Look out, lad! Destroy its wing! Marvelous and timely hit! Hurry! Time is running out! seized it. As the clock struck twelve, Dreamtime lurched into its darkest, most terrifying hour. Kotaro, look! The Earth! <laughs> you see, Kotaro! Now children in everywhere will be locked in an inescapable nightmare! Their souls will be ripe for the harvest! They will make my master invincible! <laughs> Dragon! Come forth! Open the gateway to Earth! Bring me those children's souls. Kutaro's victory over Rooster felt empty. He should have known Monkey wouldn't play fair. And now that the damage was done, he was powerless to stop the long night to come. Even in the land of time, there was no changing the past. The Land of Time's clock tower had struck midnight, plunging all of Earth's children into an endless nightmare. And worse yet, the Moonbear King had sent Dragon to harvest their souls. Act 6 is getting messy indeed. Let us continue our adventure. Dragon had been called forth from his celestial roost to bring judgment down upon all who dared to defy his ruthless master. And it was none other than Dragon who spirited away the souls of children each night on the tyrant's behalf. That's right, Dragon was part of the reason Kutaro got dragged into this mess in the first place. But now, the stakes were much higher. The souls of every last boy and girl on Earth. Having parted the heavens and opened a portal to Earth, Dragon set to work, harvesting the souls of children from the coils of their nightmares. Dragon! Bring me those souls right now! <laughs> If the Moon Bear King devours all those, we'll have a disaster on our hands! Not only will I not rule the Moon, he'll rule the whole dark universe! Come on, Kutaro! Hop to it! Stop that monster! Whoosh! Kutaro watched Dragon soar off with a host of children's souls in his wake. <laughs> Just getting started! Let's see if those scissors you used against my pals can smoke a dragon! Die! Run! Oh, so you want some juice? That what you want? Have some of this! What? Hold still, Pipsquid! Ah! You... you fight good! But I ain't giving 
up my piece of the boss's moonstone. Not to nobody! You can kiss the earth! And your little adventure! Goodbye! Hold it right there! I've had enough of your bullying and that stupid accent! Don't you make me go full Picarina on you! Kataro, you may be from Earth, but you're our hero! I know you can win! You can beat him! Kid, let's settle this like men! The Dragon Man, bring it on! You got me. After an epic battle, the wicked dragon had been slain, and the souls of the children were free once again. Kataro! Another piece of the puzzle! <laughs> Just one more sword! And monkey business is no match for ours. Hey! Wait just a solar second! We beat Dragon! What gives? You're too late! All you did was ensure the gateway between the Earth and Moon stays open! Now, I need only wait. <laughs> Soon, the Moon Bear King would possess a more terrible power than ever. But Kataro risked everything to stop the dragon. It can't have been for nothing. No, it's too soon to give up. We've still got the Moon Goddess. If we put the Moonstone back together, we can bring her back too. And with her on our side, that half-baked grizzly is toast. We've got to stay positive. Let's go find Monkey and make him cough up that last piece. That's right. You'll get your goddess. Now would you just hurry up? Goddess or no goddess, the tyrant's too strong now. If we get the moonstone back, Mew should send Kutaro home where he belongs. Don't be crazy. Why would I ever do that? Kutaro is our last hope, especially mine. <laughs> You go, man. You've stuck that warty nose of yours in my business for the last time! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yowzers, this is terrible. With the dragon down and one moonstone shard to go, Kutura was certainly on a run. But with the witch in the tyrant's clutches and the power of countless souls at stake, it seemed the rolling would be uphill from here on out. Kutaro had decommissioned Dragon, but now the Moonbear King possessed a dreadful power. With the witch in captivity, what was a hero to do? The stage is set for the final act in Kutaro's saga. And so the story continues. Hot on General Monkey's heels, Kutaro and Picarina stumbled into a steep, snowy mess of peaks called the Mean Moon Mountains. The last Moonstone Shard was all Kutaro needed to free his soul from its puppet prison and return to his home down on Earth. But our hero remained troubled as he climbed. He knew General Dragon and that clock had given the Moon Bear King control over every last child's soul. As Jack Frost nipped at the boy's fingers and toes, a cold and unshakable suspicion was starting to tug at his heart. Wait, Your Highness, this is all a terrible mistake. <laughs> and I to your fur looks especially lustrous today. Spare me the theatrics. I know exactly who you are. Uh, then get your grimy paws off me, Cappy! You thought?
thought you could pull a fast one on me. Hey, Granny! But you were wrong! Once I've slapped down every last soul of every child on Earth, no moon goddess, not even the sun, will be able to stop me! Ultra <laughs> still can! Calibrus chose him for a reason! The power of the four champions will see him through to his final task! <laughs> Restore the White Moonstone and bring light back to this realm, you poor stupid bear! I can't wait to watch it knock the stuffing oh, out of you! Shut up! <laughs> bring it on, Kutaro! Bring it down, Kutaro! is not princess talk, young lady. Look at you, my only child, a pixie. Don't worry, I love you all the same. It was the moon bear. Bad bear. monkey! He cast a spell? I told you to let the moon work out its own kinks. But did you listen? Okay, no, but I was I worried about you. the moon goddess. She's always been so no. sweet to me, you know? Yes, well, she had it coming. I warned her, beware the dark side of the moon. Never turn your back on the shadows. But no, I want to balance. Light and dark and equal shares. Yeah, that works. But Daddy, me and Kataro have worked so hard to find the Moonstone Shard. Galactic issues, sweetie. Not fair to pin it on one kid. I know, I know. Tell you what. I'll go have a word with this moon bear. Rough him up a little, then save the goddess. How's that? Sound good? Oh, Daddy, that would be solar. Yeehaw! <laughs> Ew, ow, oh, ah, oh. <laughs> Daddy? We'll find another moon, honey. <laughs> well, you're no help. Fine, we'll take care of it. Come on, Kataro. And so, with newfound courage, Kutaro and Picarina descended from the brilliant center of the galaxy to once again face the dark terrors of the moon. <laughs> Kutaro had finally obtained the last piece of the Moonstone. But did he stand any chance against a tyrant more powerful than the sun himself? Would peace be restored, or would Kutaro be ripped to pieces? Now back to Kutaro's tale. Well, Kutaro's relunization kicked off with a horrific sight. The beautiful Castle Waxwain had been bound curtain and keep by Castle Grizzlestein's vile vines anchored to the moon like a swan in the death squeeze of a thousand vipers. Even now, an army of grubs was making ready to storm the goddess's Argent Palace and bring it down. Thanks to their convenient solar staircase, Kutaro and Picarina were back on moon soil. Oh no! The White Castle! They won't be able to hold out much longer! We need to revive the goddess, like, right now! So, uh, any ideas? Do you think we need some kind of lunar super glue? The only thing I like better than power is more power! Not even the sun can touch me now. But it's not enough. I need more. Give me all the power! Kutaro! You have to <laughs> Are you two all right? Ying Yang! Did you procure the last Moonstone Shard? Of course. But I wish these things came with an instruction manual. 
What for? It'll be written in your language anyway. Just get to the palace before it collapses. It's our only hope. The moment of truth was upon them. Would they manage to unhumpty dumptify the Moonstone? And would the goddess really return to them if they Despite the Moon Bear King's counter schemes, the Moonstone was about to be made whole again. Katara! <sighs> the White Moonstone's pure light was restored, and it rained down upon the Moon as power surged back into Castle Waxwing. And there was hope. What's happening to me? Did Kutaro finally... Wait! I remember now! It's me! I am me! My lovely little bear, I have returned, and your machinations must be stopped. The balance must be restored. You wish. Ah! Let me out of here! No! I command it! <laughs> Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the toughest guy of all? You know who the strongest is. Kutaro! <laughs> With the future of Earth and Moon hanging in the balance, Castle Black loomed larger than ever. Inside, Kutaro must face his mortal enemy, the Moon Bear King. The final battle draws near. It's the beginning of the end, folks. Let us continue our adventure. Ah, fate. As the forces of light and darkness said, Marco, what could the moon say but Polo? The bitter struggle for power between the shimmering castle Waxwain and the shadowy castle Grizzlestein had reached a healthy boil. Hero and Tyrant would soon have their final showdown. At stake were not just one boy's fate, but the fate of the whole moon and the earth and the sun and galaxy and... Well, let's just say he better not mess up. Now it just so happens, Kutaro and Picarina weren't the only ones who had refused to give up on the White Castle. A battle be brewing, me hearties! Man the long toms! Raise those mizzen masts! Look alive, me buckos! There be no getting the Davies now! Aim for the Black Castle! Where be my coxswain? Ying yang Faster! Put you back in it! Hi, hi, Captain. The buxom beauty Esma Potts has need of her able seamen. Fire! Fire! Thanks to Kutaro, the White Castle had been restored. And now the stage was set for their epic clash with Castle Grizzlestein. Well done, me bucko! I knew you had it in you! Esma Potts, me sweet! See how me cannons blast for the heat! Just crank, you stupid castle! Patience, love! Kutaro will save ye! Between Castle Waxwain's fusillades and Kutaro's own efforts, the Black Castle had finally screeched to a halt. Its ramparts ruptured and Bailey's blazed, and the victor's cheering echoed through its dying hall. Woo! But hold on! The Moonbear King is still in there! We have to finish him off or the children will never get their souls back. And Kitaro, neither will you! So you destroyed my castle. Big deal. Who needs a castle when I am already invincible? Poor oh, little bear. You are in no position to pity me. I am all powerful! And what does that achieve? It won't fill the emptiness in your heart. You have no friends you trust, no family to love. No subjects who love you back. You're still just the lonely little bear you've always been. Power changes nothing. I don't need love. 
My subjects, the soldiers, and the people of the moon and the children of the earth serve just one purpose. To feed my hunger. Now, Kutaro had done a lot of growing up during his journey, but the tyrant had just one-upped him in a big way. And unfortunately, it is mathematically proven that nastiness is directly proportional to body mass. The boy was a whirlwind, and at last, the tyrant bent the knee. Quote-unquote all-powerful tyrant was getting taken apart at the seams by Calibris. Soul after soul slipped out of his stuck ah! That's it! Keep it up! Very brave. Ah. Ahoy, where be me fair Esma? Right here, Romeo. What? Ah, no! <laughs> the Mune Witch, Esma Potts, is really the Mune Goddess. Didn't we go over this? <gasps> no, you mean to feel like we didn't! Well, it's your fault for not asking. When the Moonstone was shattered, my memories and powers were jumbled and I was transformed. Captain Gaff, I shall never forget your kind attentions. Soften me, Timber! The one perfect beauty in this hideous world! Gone! Ha-ha! <laughs> I'll be done! I'm not done with you yet. I don't need a power. What are you doing? Uh, what's the meaning? 
king of this! Do you ah! want to be my friend? <laughs> really? If you're really my friend, then you can stay here forever! You are! <laughs> Kutaro, get the Black Moonstone from Little Bear. We have to set things right again. Little Bear, that power is too much for you. Give it back! But without this, I'm nothing. I'd... I'd just be me. Would you still be my friend? Pals to the bitter end! Oh, Kutaro! And so the two Moonstones were joined together, light and shadow waxing and waning in balance, the way the night sky had always meant them to. Don't fret one little head. You have grown to a hundred times the boy you used to be. So big is your soul Yay! that your old head would hardly fit. Quite right. <laughs> uh, Kutaro, how will we stay friends if you're going far, far away? Hush now, little bear. You have a friendship, and that is a ship that can sail anywhere. Once tight, always tight. <laughs> um, We'll always be friends, even the goddess. <laughs> hmm. Really? I must remain impartial. I suppose she'd rather consort with stuffed animals in her magic castle. Poor thing. <laughs> I heard that. And so Kutaro's journey to save the moon came to a grand and joyous conclusion. Yeah! Come back to me, Esma Potts, flower of the moon. Would that I could pluck you again. Davy Jones, take me. Me world be hellfire! For most of the party's concerned.